pray. We're going to talk about the rules. Talk about rules now. Everyone needs to know what's expected of them. You see the little picture of the boy at the fence. We all need fences, don't we? Especially children. You'll find out oftentimes you're teaching children, a group of children, that they'll be rowdy until you establish the boundaries of the fences. And you know what? Um, and especially the ch so many children on Ritalin, ADD, ADHD, and all that going on. You know what? Those children especially really, they work well when they know the boundaries. No boundaries and you've got a mess on your hands. If you don't establish boundaries, what's expected of them? And so we have rules that we go over every single week. Every single week. We have ba four basic rules. I don't know if you could see them up there. And the same rules I use every single week. Now in the curriculum I give you, it has some cute <laughs> ways of teaching the rules. I don't do cute ways. We lay out the rules very straightforward, very firm, because I believe if I'm firm at the beginning with the rules, I don't have to be firm at the end when they mess up. Not that we won't have problems along the way. We'll talk about handling things. But I'm firm on the rules. We don't pl really play with them a lot. I do sometimes do a little bit of fun stuff with it with the kids. But for the most part, I'm serious. I lay down the rules. Number one rule is stay in your seat. And have the kids hit their bottom. And I tell the kids, you stay in your seat. That means if you need to get up, if you have to go to the restroom, put your hand up. But I also ask that you please go to the restroom before kids' church. And I make that known to the parents, too. Because how many of you know once one goes? Yeah. Boom, boom. I made a mistake. I started a new kids' church at my wife's church last week, her first service. I didn't do, and they stay in the service. Pastor, they opens up a song, and the pastor does a little children's sermon, and then they send them down. And I took them. I took them straight into kids' church, you know. And it was a lot of little, real little ones, you know, a lot of five, four, five, and six-year-olds. And so... Man, right away they had to go, I should, I should have did the potty break first, you know, I forgot, you know. But anyhow, tell the kids, go to the bathroom before you come. But if we don't want any accidents, put your hand up, we'll let you go if you have a question, but stay in your seat. We'll be getting up to play some games and sing some songs, and we'll tell you, but other than that, you're to stay in your seat. Number two rule is, is keep your hands to yourself, put your hands together. This means don't touch your neighbor. For any reason, we don't kick, we don't punch, we don't push, we don't shove, we don't pinch for any reason. If you do that, the first time I will, I'll warn you. Second time, you're going to sit with your parents the next two weeks upstairs, and you don't want to go upstairs. It's proof. You think this is boring. It's really boring upstairs. And so, <laughs> for kids. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> Anyhow, and uh, so, don't touch your neighbor. That's a very serious rule that we do not break. Next rule is raise your hands to talk. Put your hand up if you need to say something. If you want to we'll ask questions, you put your hand up. If you need to go to the restroom, you need to ask anything. Put your hand up and one of these teachers and myself will get with you. But don't do this. Don't be Arnold Horshack. Now, most of you know who Arnold Horshack is. The kids never know these days. Yeah, and I don't even think reruns are on of Welcome Back, Cotter. But I do it anyhow. I, I bore the kids with this each week. And so, as Arnold Horshack was a guy on Welcome Back, Cotter. And every time he asked a question, he knew he'd say, Oh, oh, Mr. Cotter, Mr. Cotter, I know the answer, Mr. Cotter. Don't be Arnold Horshack. Don't be that guy. Just put your hand up and we'll call on you. If we don't call on you, you don't have to forgive us. We'll do our best. We'll put your hand up, we'll try to get you. And the last rule is, the whistle means quiet. And if we have one whistle, it's for the leader. So I'll tell the kids, listen, we're going to have fun today. We're going to sing, we're going to shout, we're going to clap, we're going to jump, we're going to play some games today. But when I blow this whistle, it means sit up straight, hands in your lap, mouth closed. It means we're going into the teaching, the Bible lesson today. And that's so important. I want you to get it. It's important. So how about that? We're going to have fun. We're going to have a good time today. But when it's time to listen, I'm going to blow this whistle. Let's try it. One, two, three. Burp. Sit up straight, hand your lap. That's great. You guys are awesome. Those are the rules today. Yes. Well, we have those rules posted on a board just like... Well, that. you should have them posted on a board, plus also we'll project them. Okay. Overkill. Everything. In drama and kids' church, everything is done bigger. Expressive. I don't know if any of you have done some acting... Everything's big. And you feel silly, so it's repetition, it's overkill, it's bigger in kids' church. Everything's bigger. You emote everything. Okay, you're louder, you're, it's bigger, whatever. So, okay? All right, the rules need to be visual. It'd be good to put them on a poster board, and we'll have, maybe on Wednesday somebody will make those up. We'll also be projected. 
Don't give a big list of do's and don'ts. Three or four rules are effective. These are good rules. Just use these ones. I taught this to a church in, um, up near Johnstown, ministry up there. Trained them just like I'm training you. I said, I'll come back. Come back in a few weeks, see how you guys are doing. Kind of coached them through that. I came back three weeks, and they had 20 rules. I said, Jesus only gave you 10. What are you doing to these kids? It took 25 minutes to go through the rules. You think the kids were bored already? I said, four rules. That's all you need. Four rules. These work. And be firm with them. Repeat them every single week. You think the kids would get bored with it? They don't. They love to know where the fences are, where the boundaries are. Repeat them every week. And only one leader has the whistle.